Uh, first of all, I just want to really express a lot of appreciation for um, everybody that had a had a hand in this hosting. Uh, in particular, our our um, our group here at Texas that does a terrific job and. And then most importantly, I want to thank the fans. Uh, I thought today was a really, really terrific environment for women's basketball, and um, they have they helped us get through this one today. So uh, lots of thanks, and I'm uh, really, really proud of our team. Uh, I, I wrote on the board, ironically enough, today before the game that it didn't matter what it looked like, that we just needed to try to win, and that was a good thing to write probably today. But uh, our, our group never gave in, and uh, they showed a lot of resilience and toughness and um, you know, just really proud. It was a, a complete team effort, I think, from our part. We'll take questions for Texas student athletes Brooke McCarty and Joyner Holmes, please. <coughs> Go ahead, Cedric. I'm Cedric Golden, also American Statesman. Joyner, what did, what did you see on that last rebound, and um, what were your thought processes when you saw the ball coming off the rim? Um, from the first shot that Sean took, um, it was. Great. So I thought the second one it was going to go in, but I know um, we do have a method on the free throw line, and um, me and Jada talked to each other, and we told each other who was going to go first and second. And I mean, it came off my side, and I saw it, so I just and I saw the defender. She didn't box me out, so I tried to tip it in on the first one. It didn't go in, and I grabbed it and I put it in on the second one. Rick. Rick Cannon, too, the Austin American <coughs> Statesman. Brooke, you guys have been in a lot of tough games this year against really good competition. When you're down six or eight points in the fourth quarter today, did you draw upon anything from the past that, hey, uh, we've done this before, or something like that to make that comeback? I think when we get in tough games, it's kind of that mindset of we have done this before, and so we kind of know how to handle it. I don't think we would have known how to handle it at the beginning of the season, but now since we have that experience, we know what to say to each other and we know how to respond. And so we just kind of took that and ran with it, and it worked in our favor. Jim? Uh, Jim Vertuno of the Associated Press. Brooke, this time, though, it's a trip to the Sweet 16 that was on the line. Anything <coughs> being talked about during the game, uh, you know, hey, we got to get this done. Definitely. Um, even from our freshman, she kind of told us at one point, we're not going home today. And so I think we just started talking to each other during the game. And we were like, well, either we're going to play or we're, we're not going to play. And so it just kind of um, was an urgency thing. And we just kind of locked down and stayed focused on the game plan and focused on each other. Cedric? Joyner, uh, coach said uh, last week, or you know, near the end of the regular season, she thinks she may have hit the freshman wall. Did you hit a wall, and uh, did you run through it today? Um, I do feel like I hit a wall, um, but always after every game, like if I didn't um, do my job or fulfill what I had to fulfill, my teammates always had my back, and they always told me that regardless of what you do, just go out there and have fun. And I don't think the last couple of games before going into this tournament, I don't think I was having fun. And I just will put it as simple as that. I don't think I was having fun. And so today um, it was really fun. We had a great time. And like seeing the look on my seniors' face and letting them know that this is not the last game, although they didn't have their best game, we were all going to pull through and pull it out for them. Rick? Rick, one of the plays of the game uh, late, you stole an inbounds pass, uh, play of the day from a defensive standpoint. Could you talk about what you saw, whether it was in her eyes or what was your your job, and then how did you cut it off like that? Well, they were when they were taking the ball out, they, they were trying to get it to their point guard. And so I just read her eyes, and I knew that whoever was there guarding her um, was there. And so I knew I, if I could get a tip, at least we would get they would get the ball, or I could get the ball and give it to them. And so it was just kind of focusing. I think it was just adrenaline rushing in that moment and just knowing what to do. Jim? Brooke, just as big of a play seemed to be picking up that fifth foul on Spencer, who had such a huge game bringing that back. She's got four fouls. At that point, are you trying to engage her to, 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 to get that fifth foul and get her out of here? Uh, definitely. I mean, she she was great tonight. She she really did great for her team. And but um, we knew that she had four fouls, and so we just try. I tried to engage with her as much as I could, and just try to get her that fifth foul. Cedric, Jordan, you said uh, you weren't having any fun, uh, so. So what did you do mentally to to get out of, I guess, if it was a funk or whatever, to, to get back to having fun? 
Um, I just listened to my teammates talk to me. You know, I think um, some games, like, I didn't really fully hear them. I, I wouldn't say I was tuning them out, but some games I just wasn't having it with myself or my teammates. And so I just think I've put on the role of, like, listening to them and them holding me accountable for anything that I do wrong in practice and them holding me accountable regardless of whatever's going on. And I think that I recently I've been listening to them and I went and practiced with a different mindset. And so... Ever since that, like, I think we've all uh, just pulled together and we've been playing harder and we pulled it out today. Go ahead, please. Sydney Rubin, Daily Texan. Um, for both of you, Coach talked about a little how <coughs> huge the crowd was in playing on your home court. How big was it for you guys, your last game here this season, just to go out like this here? And how big was the crowd for you today? <coughs> Me personally, I think the crowd was great. I know coming in here, like, the, at the beginning of the season, we didn't really have many fans this year. And I feel like um, we brought along a lot of people with us, and I, I'm loving it. Like, I love playing here, and I'm really sad that we're going out um, not playing here anymore. But I love the crowd, and I thank them for everything they've done for us this year. And they travel with us everywhere, so it's great. Uh, definitely. They've been great, and today it was a great atmosphere. I mean, who wouldn't want to play in the Irwin Center in front of that crowd and hearing them out there cheering for us? And so um, it was a great turnout today, and I think we really fed off of them as much as they fed off of us. And so we thank them because they were really an energy booster for us. Rick? Uh, Joanna, I may have said that uh, Brooke had the defensive play of the day, but I'm uh, remiss. Uh, can, you, uh, can you take charge. us through the charge? Exactly what did you see? her doing and your positioning on the play? Um, give credit where credit is due. I know uh, the Spencer and um, the Wilson kid, they did great. They played their game and they executed it to a T. But I just knew that um, after multiple plays of them going downhill and going downhill, and sometimes we weren't in help side, so that was um, put on the post our fault. But I just knew that her going downhill and as fast as she was coming, I knew I could I, – could have blocked the shot, but I just didn't think that was the right decision at the time. And just letting her body fall into mine, and I took the charge, and I don't do that often. So, I mean, it was a surprise to me, just like probably to y'all. And so <laughs> when I took it and um, I fell and I looked at the ref, but I thought I, I thought they called a block at first, but I looked at the ref to my right, and he called a charge, and it went from there. Additional questions for the Texas student athletes? Go ahead, Jim. Brooke, what is it? Mean to get for this program to get to the Sweet 16 for three straight years? I think it's a standard. I mean, we come in and work hard every year, and I think that we just these past years stringing along these Sweet 16s and things like that. I think it's kind of the standard here now, and so it's just like this is what you do, and so you come here to do this. So, any additional <laughs> questions for the Texas student athletes? We'll excuse Brooke and Joyner, let Thank them you. go back to the locker room. <clears throat> Time is 4.42. Again, we'll keep the Texas locker room open until 5.15 today. At this point, we'll take questions for Texas coach Karen Aston. Jim? Jim Bertuno with the Associated Press. Just, Karen, can you address, I, I'd ask Brooke about trying to engage Spencer. Is that just that sort of play that she's been making for you all year? She seems to just come up with things that you need when you need it. It's a three-point shot. It's, it's drawing that fifth foul. What is, what is McCarty giving you in this game and all season? Well, she, she's definitely a, kind of a calming force for our team. Uh, you know, you say a, a little engine or whatever it is you want to call her, but that's kind of what she is for this basketball team. And I think that sometimes she – she tries to facilitate and do what I think a point guard's job is, but I do think that she's really grown in a sense of understanding what is the moment where she needs to make plays. And she didn't really understand that at the beginning of the year. At the beginning, it was I think she tried to do too much. And then she, as the year has gone on, she's grown into knowing what moments are best for her to shoot and, and, and really, I don't want to say take over, but definitely make plays when they when they're need to be made. Senator? They're freshmen. Um, <laughs> I mean, the size and the, the quickness and the strength. Um, I know you see the potential. Um, talk a little bit about the ups and downs that come along with, <laughs> with seeing someone that you know will be great one day. <clears throat> um, I, I'm assuming you're most, in, you know, probably talking about Joyner the most of all, and then, okay. you know, definitely. The other two had impact on our game today, for sure. But the the roller coaster for a freshman is is pretty normal. I, I've never seen one that doesn't 
ride the roller coaster. And the thing that I've probably been the most impressed about Joyner is that she's never backed down from the expectations here at Texas. And in particular, the expectations that everyone had for her. And she had the typical, I would say, moments where she got some hype and then had to learn how to handle that and stay focused. And then she went through the moments of I'm tired and I've never been this tired before in my life and I don't know how to get through this. And <laughs> But I, I still have been really impressed with how she's handled her freshman season. Again, lots of expectations. She came in here as a player of the year um, from a high school perspective. And I mean, some people go into situations where they might have expectations, but the window of opportunity isn't there for them to have impact like she did. And she stepped into a role that was very much needed in our team. I mean, we hadn't had a power forward since NECA graduated, really. And for her to step in and take that per that responsibility, um, I've been impressed with. I mean, sure, there's moments when you want her to be better and more grown, but She's handled it pretty well. Jim? Karen, can you just address getting to the Sweet 16 for the third straight year? You're in your fifth year in the program now. I guess Brooke called it a standard. I guess that's what you wanted when you got there. <coughs> Most definitely. I mean, it, you know, it, 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 there were some steps that had to be taken for us to get to the level of um, consistency in the way that we do things. Um, you call that culture, standard, whatever it is that you want to call it. But most of it comes with recruiting, and most of it comes with recruiting student athletes that have that standard. I mean, you can have it as a coach, and Texas can have it as a university and as an athletic program, but when you recruit players that that's their personal standard is to be the best they can be, then it helps you get to where you need to be from a program perspective. And she's she, along with um, many others that we have on our team, have, have a personal standard. Senator? You guys are shot lights out first quarter, just couldn't miss. Um, but then the second and third quarter, things kind of went south. Um, how are you able to marshal, marshal your resources, <coughs> get them back, especially with those two guards going on against you guys? <coughs> well, the first quarter was really special for us. And, and then we got into that good old foul trouble that we seem to get into every game. And... I mean, I really, really was so proud of our young kids and the way they responded. I mean, they made shots, they made plays. And then I thought the second quarter, they got a little fatigued. Um, I, if you notice, I had to use timeouts where I am not accustomed to using them, and that was to try to get them a break and get them to breathe for a second. And I think when they got fatigued, they stopped paying attention defensively, and that's really where their guards got going. And flip that on the other end, he went to the box and won on Brooke. And we avoided that. We avoid that defense most most often when Ariel and Brooke are in together. But I mean, and speaking to the question, I think you asked the players. There wasn't anything that we hadn't seen this year. Um, we'd seen that before, but the second quarter, I thought we responded um, with too many quick shots, not trying to get the ball inside where we could have. And then I thought that we got into a little bit better rhythm in the second half with their understanding of how to guard. And then they went to the triangle on, on Brooke and Ariel. But we did a better job of getting them in the action still. And um, those are all things that I think we learned along the way in the Big 12. I mean, everybody threw us junk. Um, or I don't want to say everybody, but a lot of people did. And so we had to handle it. And that experience paid off today. In the back, camera well, please. <coughs> tell by the look on their faces that they were going to win and you've said that before in a lot of these really close big games where do you think that comes from um today it was collective you know there's times when i think it's brook and ariel or you know times when it's Brian kelsey um today it was pretty collective I mean, there was engagement with all of them. Uh, they were all really encouraging with each other. Nobody had negative body language, anything like that. And I think it was, um, I mean, maybe led by 
the older players, but I definitely think the younger players at times this year have kind of felt sorry for themselves when things weren't going their way. And today they, they all kind of carried a different mindset, like we're just not going to let each other down. And that's kind of what happens in postseason play. Although I have – I mean, I haven't said anything about North Carolina State, but they were they were special today. I mean, those guards were really good, and we couldn't keep, help ourselves from fouling them. Um, we just couldn't adjust to them going downhill. Uh, Joyner said it best. And then when we talked every time out about you know making them make extra passes and being in help, and we were just couldn't get there in time. And I thought we made some plays down the stretch. Audrey, Kelsey, Joyner, our, our post finally made some plays and help that helped us out. Sydney, go ahead. Sydney Rubin, Daily Texan. Um, you guys went 11 of 12 from the free throw line in the final quarter. Can you just talk about how big that was for you because the game came down to four points? Well, we've definitely grown up in that area. Uh, that was a, an Achilles heel for us, uh, really quite a lot of season. But that old saying, I think Jody told me this old saying, don't talk about it. Just if you're not shooting free throws, well, ignore it. And it'll come around at some point. So we did actually stop talking about it. And we may have gotten a few more shots up. But I'm not sure we did a whole lot different. But they did start. I noticed that about two weeks ago that we were starting to shoot free throws more consistently. Rick? Uh, Joyner said that people may have been surprised that you know, she drew the charge. Uh, it's probably the first one of her life. Let's, <laughs> let's be real. I looked at it in. Uh, I looked at it in the locker room because obviously, I mean, it was. There were some. There were a lot of calls that. I mean, you just look at them and, in the heat of the moment, I mean. Who knows, you know? Hard, tough block charge is a really hard call. Um, the game was probably hard to call. I do. I would have to say that. So I mean. But I did look at it, and she was set. She was definitely set. Cedric? You got some uh, really good defensive minutes from Brianna Taylor. I mean, going head up against mm -hmm. one of the best guards in the country. Um, and you were subbing offense for defense. Uh, yeah. I guess uh, talk about your role players and how, and how they did well, especially with the foul trial. They were the difference in the game, and I, you know, I feel quite responsible really for not managing them better managing them better in the second quarter. I mean, I, you know, they got on that run and it's kind of fool's gold sometimes and then they just kept shooting shots that <clears throat> were quick and, and not great ones. And I should have given them some more tools in the second quarter for us to be better. But again, I thought they got fatigued too and they stopped playing defense. That was really where I thought we lost, we lost our lead defensively in the second quarter, but you can't, I mean, I thought they were all huge. I mean, Suge was confident today. I mean, she looked like a confident basketball player. And I mean, I've just been waiting on that because she's such a special player. And nobody has really seen the real Suge yet because she did come in here off of an ACL and she's gonna be a really special player at Texas. And, you know, LaShawn gave us big minutes. I thought, um, you know, Jada, Jada gave us really good minutes in the first half. Um, and then I, I, the lastly, but definitely not least, I, I thought Audrey was really huge for us. I mean, she got a couple of offensive rebounds. And she sort of jumped. I mean, I thought our post players kind of stood around a little bit too much. And Audrey was the one that we were able to kind of point to her and go, OK, can everybody else give the same effort that she is on the boards? And then all of a sudden, they all started scrambling and getting offensive rebounds. And I thought that was the hustle plays and the scramble plays were huge for us. We have time for and one. And Jordan gave us good minutes. Again, everybody that came in gave us something. 